Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about heteroscedasticity. This is a word which is coined from the word hetero which means different or unequal and scedasticity means spread or scatter. You can see here that the spread of the data according to the income in this is uniform. Bell-shaped curve is quite uniform. Therefore, this is known as a homoscedastic disturbance. If I talk about heteroscedasticity, you can see that for different income level, we are having a different variance in the data. What's the nature of heteroscedasticity? If the error variances across observations are constant in a given model, we say we are having a homoscedasticity. But if they are dependent on time or any other variable, so error variance across observations are not constant in given model, then we say it is a heteroscedasticity. Basically, we have violated the assumption of homoscedasticity and therefore it creates a problem. Let us see what are the consequences of it. Consequences are the OLS estimators and the regression predictions based on them remains unbiased and consistent. Consistent. The OLS estimators are no longer the blue, there is a base linear unbiased estimators because they are no longer efficient. The regression predictions will be inefficient too. Because of the inconsistency of the coma variance matrix of the estimated regression code, the test of hypothesis T test and F test are no longer valid. Problems of heteroscedasticity is likely to be more common in cross sectional than in time series. What are the consequences? It affects the variances, the standard errors of the estimated beta coefficients. OLS method under the estimate underestimates the variances and standard errors yields low standard errors. This leads to higher than expected values of T and F statistics, which yields statistically significant coefficients, which yields to the rejection of null, null hypothesis, causing the type 1 error. Both T and F statistics is no longer reliable for hypothesis testing. According to Mankow, the heteroscedasticity has never been a good reason to throw out otherwise a good model. What can be the reasons of heteroscedasticity? One of the one of the reasons is error learning model. The errors of behavior become smaller over the time. Let's try to understand in the layman terms. When you started typing on the on the keyboard for the first time, you created many year, many errors. That is a typographic error. Over the period, you understood and therefore the errors started decreasing. When you started driving the car for the first time, possibly you committed many errors. But over the time, the errors started decreasing. And this is the reason there is a decrease in the error and therefore there is a presence of heteroscedasticity. Second, as income go, people have more discretion income. Simple thing is that those, in, those who are having less income, their expenditure is less. If the increase in the income possibly, there may be the variations in the expenditure. So here, sigma square is likely to increase with income. Similarly, companies with large profits are generally expected to show greater variability in their dividend policy than the companies with lower profits. Another example is higher income families on the average save more than the lower income. But there is also a variability in their savings. As the data collection techniques imp uh, improves, your sigma square is likely to decrease. I will cons also consider here data processing or rather data collection techniques. Banks that have sophisticated data processing equipment are likely to commit few errors in comparison to those that don't have such facilities. Heteroscedasticity can also arise as a presence of outliers. More the outliers, more the chances of heteroscedasticity. So, if the sample size is small, it can substantially alter the results of the regression. Another source of heteroscedasticity is that you have not correctly specified the regression model and you have omitted some model, or some, omitted some variable. But if these omitted variables are included in the model, it may be possible that it can alter the results. Another source of heteroscedasticity is skewness in the distribution. We know 
that there are some economic variables such as income, wealth and education. They are having a skewness in it. The well known that the distribution of income and wealth is in most societies is uneven. Other source of heteroscedacity according to the David Henry notes are incorrect data transformation or incorrect functional form. So there are two types of heteroscedacity. One is unconditional. If the heteroscedacity is not related with independent variable, then it is known as conditional, unconditional. If it is related with dependent variable, then it is conditional. Generally, heteroscedasticity is found in cross-section data. So there are some methods for detection of heteroscedasticity. One is graphical method. Here you can see that the error component is increasing, the variance is increasing, this is increasing linearly, it's having a parabola and this is the quadratic. What we want is a healthy residual graph. To do the graphical in inspection of the data, I'll be using H prize one. All these data sets are very readily available on Google. These are, these are the data sets of Damodar Gujarati. Now the data set is available. The variables are also available. You can open price and bedroom together. Number of bedrooms and price. Open as group. Now I'll go in view graph. And here I'll activate the scatter graph. With the lines regression. Click OK. You can see here that for two bedrooms, the variations in the prices. For three bedrooms, the variations in the prices. Four bedrooms, the variations in the prices. So, het heteroscedasticity is existing. Now, let us consider another variable, and that is price square pit. View, graph, scatter, line. Okay. And you can see with the square fit also the price is changing. So we have already seen the informal methods of detection of heteroscedasticity through graphs. Now let us see the formal method. Assume that we are having a cross-section multivariate linear model. Here, no time element is involved. And therefore, here, my variance mu, mu i is equal to sigma i square. If I talk about time series, I'm not considering here any cross-section. And therefore, my mu t is equal to sigma t square. But when I consider the cross-section and time element together, and it uh, that is a multivariate linear model, so my variance mu i t is equal to sigma i t square. Now there are many methods to detect the heteroscedasticity in the data. The tests which are popular are Bruce Pagan test, where I consider mu i square is equal to delta 0 plus delta 1 x 1 i plus delta 2 x 2 i. So I try to model this error term. So another test which is also used is White's test. What is the null hypothesis of this test? Delta 1 is equal to delta 2 is equal to delta 3 equal to 0. Errors are homoscedastic. The alternative is at least one of the deltas is different from 0. At least one of the x affects the variance of the residuals. Errors are heteroscedastic. Now we will have to first of all run the equation. I'll go here and I'll say the price of my house is dependent on I'm taking the constant term number of bedrooms in my house and square pit. Click OK. And this is a regression. This is output for the regression. Now I will have to go in view residual diagnostics. Heteroscedasticity test. 
it will give me range of options. Normally, we go for Bruce Pegg and Gottfried test. Click OK. Now, you can copy this output by just Control A, copy, click OK, go into the Word file, press Control V, and you will be able to get the output here. The command for running the equation, regression equation, equation was price C bedrooms square feet, as it was not visible in that window. The null hypothesis of this test is residuals are homoscedastic. Alternative is residuals are heteroscedastic. The value which you have to concentrate is this one. You can see as the p-value is 0 0.0051, which is less than 5% level of significance, we reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are heteroscedastic. Now, what to do if we are having a cross product term? So the white test can be a test of pure heteroscedasticity or a specification error or both. It has been argued that if no cross product terms are present in the white test procedure, then it is a test of pure heteroscedasticity. Cross product terms are present, then it is a test of both heteroscedasticity and specification bias. Let us see how we can carry out this in eViews. For this, I'll go in View, Residual Diagnostics, Heteroscedasticity test, I'll activate the white test. Make sure you click on include the white cross terms. Click OK. Our interpretation remains the same as the p value is less than 0 0.05. We reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are heteroscedastic. One more test that's an Angeles arc test. A new concept. Allowing for autocorrelation to occur in the variance of error terms rather than in the error terms themselves was introduced by Engle. Capture this, Engle developed the autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity arch model. The key idea behind is that the variance of mu, mu t depends on the size of the squared error term lagged one period. So here we are taking the square of it. How to carry out this test? Again, we'll have to go back. Any views? View, residual diagnostics. Heteroscedasticity, R's test. How many legs to include? We have kept it one. Click OK. Here you can see the p value is more than 0 0.05, and therefore we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that the residuals are not autocorrelated. Now, to handle this heteroscedasticity, we require some remedial measures, which we will see. First is the change the functional form that is applying log transformation to the data. Second, generalize least square. And third one is White's robust standard errors. The remedial measures, use of remedial measures which will completely depend on is sigma known or unknown. So when sigma is not known, what we'll do? We'll do the log transformation of the data. Basically, it reduces the heteroscedasticity when compared with regression using actual values. It compresses the data. So 80 is 10 times the number 8, but when you take log, it is about twice as large as log 8, and therefore it will compress the data. Now, how we can carry out this in eViews? Let's see. I'll go here, estimate. Now, instead of using the raw data, I'll do the log transformation, the log price. log bedrooms log square feet okay now i'll go in view residual diagnostics heteroscedasticity test bruce pack and godfrey click okay and you can see that the p value is now more than 0 0.05 so we fail to reject null hypothesis and therefore our residuals are homoscedastic. Now what to do when sigma is known? Remedial measures when sigma is known. So in such scenario, we will be using GLS or WS method. 
So in the presence of heteroscedasticity, OLS estimator is linear and unbiased, but not based or efficient. So that it does not have a minimum variance in the class of unbiased estimator. Now what to do? Now considering the following variable model, just a minute. Y1, Yi is equal to B1 plus B2 Xi plus Ui. The same can be written as, I am giving one term X01, which is basically one only, plus B2 Xi plus Ui. We very well know that sigma square is available beta, which is a heteroscedastic variance. Now, dividing the same thing, same variance for all the for all the variables. So y i sigma i beta beta one x zero one sigma i plus beta two x i sigma i. So we are treating with the help of variance only, and we are converting the model. So now I get y i asterisk x zero one asterisk beta two xi asterisk mu i asterisk. Now how to give this treatment in eviews is very simple. Again run the equation in the base format price c bedrooms square fit and go in options. Make sure here you activate the inverse standard deviation. Use if use default. Click OK. And you will get the answer. So this is based on GLS method. View procedural diagnostics, heteroscedasticity test. Again, run Bruce Pagan Godfrey. Click OK. And here you can see after even after doing this procedure. So even after carrying out this procedure, we got the p-value which is less than 0 0.05, which means that we reject the null hypothesis. It means that residuals are heteroscedastic. What we can do further? Again, I'll go in estimate. Again, I'll go in options. And this time, I'll go in inverse standard division and I'll make some changes here. Bedrooms, taking the power, correcting it for point. Five. Inserting the negative sign. Click OK. So this is weight type is inverse standard deviation. Now let me check again the residual diagnostic. Heteroscedasticity test. Click OK. We can see here that now the p-value is more than 0 0.05, and therefore we fail to reject null hypothesis. It is very clear. And now the residuals are homoscedastic. There is still one more pyramidal measures, and that is Huber White heteroscedasticity. How to do it in EVUs? You will have to again go back and estimate run the equation. Uh, activate the options, and here Huber White. Click OK, and you will get the estimates. View. Residual diagnostics, heteroscedasticity test, click OK. And you can see that the p value is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that your residuals are homoscedastic. For more videos on econometrics, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you.